This is a discussion on coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Coronary subclavian steel syndrome is the diversion of blood flow from the coronary circulation to the exercising left upper lip after a coronary artery bypass graft using left internal mammary artery. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. This occurs when there is a high grade stenosis or occlusion of left subclavian artery proximal to the origin of the left internal mammary artery. Though it is a rare phenomenon, it is a serious threat to the success of CABG. Cardiovascular manifestation of coronary subclavian steel syndrome could be angina, myocardial infarction, malignant arrhythmias or heart failure. Cerebral symptoms can occur due to steel from the cerebral circulation through the vertebral artery. Angiographic prevalence of proximal left subclavian artery stenosis was 3.5% in a study of 492 patients. In that study, the prevalence was 5.3% in those with potential need for coronary artery bypass grafting. Peripheral arterial disease was a predictor of subclavian stenosis. A difference in blood pressure between the two upper limbs had a good specificity but poor sensitivity for predicting left subclavian artery stenosis. Authors of the study suggested that left subclavian angiography should be done in surgical coronary artery disease patients if there is a blood pressure differential more than 10 mm of mercury or evidence of peripheral arterial disease. Exercise stress test by hand grip of left hand is a useful test to document coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Awareness of coronary subclavian steel syndrome in post CABG patients is important as the clinical presentation can be variable. It causes a functional graft failure due to hemodynamically significant proximal subclavian artery stenosis. Screening for subclavian stenosis by checking blood pressures in both arm has been recommended prior to CABG. Percutaneous revascularization prior to CABG has been advised in case subclavian stenosis is detected preoperatively. Good resolution of symptoms can be obtained in coronary subclavian steel syndrome by either surgical or percutaneous revascularization. Long term patency with either surgery or percutaneous revascularization has been reported to be excellent. Retrograde flow through lima from left anterior descending coronary artery has been demonstrated in a patient presenting with new ST elevation anterior wall myocardial infarction 12 years after CABG. The patient had critical stenosis of the lima to LAD anastomosis site and total occlusion at the origin of left subclavian artery. After primary percutaneous coronary intervention to the lima to LAD anastomotic site, Andrograde flow from proximal to distal LED was restored along with a preserved retrograde flow through the lima graft to left subclavian artery. A series of 31 patients who underwent percutaneous transluminal angioplasty of left subclavian artery shortly before or after coronary artery bypass grafting with the use of lima has been reported. Thus, subclavian angioplasty can be done either for prevention or treatment of coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Here are the first set of references on coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Second set of references are here. These are the third set of references. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.